Well, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our final video for the course. It's hard to believe that we've gotten through eight weeks already, but we almost have. So it's been a pleasure working with everyone, but I thought I'd do one final video for this week just to talk a little bit about some of the assignments that are due because I know week eight tends to be a very busy week for everybody. We've got a lot of things coming in this week, wrapping up the class, reflecting on what you learned. And so just want to make sure that we're all on the same page and you kind of know what to expect this week. Um, now, again, we're not going to be presenting new material this week. We've already covered all the material up to this point for the course. I think we've done a pretty good job of going through the organization theory literature, talking about some of the theories that impact the way in which organizations behave on a macro level, as well as how individuals behave on the micro level. Uh, we've talked about organizational theory from the perspective of organizational structure and classical theorists like Max Weber. We've talked about it from a process-oriented type of structure with people like Frederick Taylor. We've talked about it from a people perspective <clears throat> with a focus on things like human relations and human resource management theories. Uh, people like Elton Mayo and Mary Parker Follett, the pre-human relations person. Uh, we've talked about Douglas McGregor and, and folks like that that really emphasize the importance of individual employees and try to explain why organizations do what they do by focusing on the individuals, the people within those organizations. We've talked about organization change. We've talked about how organizations change over time. Sometimes that change is deliberately engineered by a leader in terms of organization culture and that we see leaders that will embed their vision and their culture into the organization. Sometimes we see organizational change happen much more organically, that as organizations go through a maturation process, uh, they tend to change. And as they change in that maturation process, the changes are not necessarily deliberately made, but rather they are something that just kind of happen uh, as an organization ages. So we talk about things like a rigidity cycle, how organizations can go from their entrepreneurial stage into kind of a, a deceleration and formalization stage where they start to develop a lot of policies and procedures and how it's not unusual to see older, larger organizations be in that formal, formalization stage as opposed to their younger, newer counterparts that tend to be in an entrepreneurial stage kind of fighting for legitimacy and trying to fight for survival. So it's an important point that not all the changes that occur to organizations are deliberately engineered, and some just happen naturally over time. So I think we've approached understanding organizations from a variety of different frameworks and a variety of different theoretical assumptions. I hope that's been useful for you to then take and apply to your organization. So this week in week eight, what we're doing is we're essentially wrapping up everything and kind of reflecting upon what we've learned over the past seven weeks. So as you know, as we discussed in our week seven video, you have your, your critical uh, assignment, your critical essay that is due. Uh, please do submit that through the task stream link if you would. Uh, if you have any questions about how to submit through the task stream link, Take a look at the learning resources for week seven, and that will give you a step-by-step -step process for how you submit the paper. But that paper is due, uh, as we've discussed before, on day three of this week number eight. But then you also have a few more assignments that are also due this week. You have your final exam, and you've had some things you've been working on, such as the, uh, the organizational jeopardy exercise last week to help you prepare for the uh, final exam. So you have that that's also due by day three of this week. Then you also have your theorist critique that you'll be just posting into the discussion area. Again, what you'll do is just post that in the discussion area and then respond to one of your classmates postings. Uh, I do ask that you only respond to one classmate so that we can make sure that everyone has one response from another classmate to their essay. So just respond to one classmate and please don't respond to a classmate who has already been responded to so that we can make sure everyone has at least one response. But you'll just be putting your theorist critique, loading that up uh, and copying that up into the discussion board. Uh, and then your final discussion board assignment is a reflections post. 
Uh, and you can see on the screen, I'm showing you the resources for week eight. Um, you know, what's been enlightening that you've learned from the class that you can then take and apply to practice? Um, what have you learned that will modify your attitude, if anything, in order to perform as a more effective public servant? So just reflecting on some of the things that you learned and, and how some of those theories and some of those concepts could be helpful for to, to you moving forward in your career as a public servant. So I know a lot of things are due by week three, uh, by day three of week eight, and I apologize for that, but just kind of the way in which the class is designed. If you have any questions at all about any of these assignments, I know I've responded to a few questions already along the way, but if you have any other questions that pop up between now and Wednesday, uh, please feel free to shoot me an email and I'm happy to get a response to you. Uh, also, I hope everyone has a relaxing and very enjoyable and blessed Easter weekend. Uh, if you have any questions, again, email me. Otherwise, it has been a true pleasure working with all of you, and I wish you all the best of luck in your future coursework and your future endeavors. And I certainly hope at least some of the information that we covered in this class will prove useful for you as you move onward, not just academically, but also as you move onward in terms of your professional career. So thank you so much for uh, all the work you've put into this class. It's been a true pleasure working with everyone. And again, I wish everyone all the best in the future. So have a great weekend, have a great week, and I hope to see you again in the future in another class. Take care.